Thanks very much, and I'm very grateful to have this chance to speak here. So, uh, so the goal is to study the distribution of rational points. But uh, so you have you have seen the picture shown by Professor Emmanuel Teich in the first lecture on the distribution of points on the projected plane and the uh, split, split quadric. So uh, equidistribution is true for these two varieties, and you get the measure you want. But locally, you see, if you watch the picture carefully, the phenomenon is different. So the goal is to, I mean, to use the Delphine time approximation uh, to on varieties developed by Makino and Rose to uh, to make this more precise. So let me first define. the basic notion of delta and approximation on algebra varieties. So let me fix k a number of field. And uh, let x be a projective variety over k and L a line bundle. So, uh, which is supposed to be ample. So we associate a exponential global height to L. And I fix an Archimedean distance function on X. And the point Q, a rational point to be approximated. So definition is due to Makino, first in 2007, and in their late, later work, Makino Rose, 2015. So they define the notion which we will call the approximation constant. So for y, a sub-variety, so we define the approximation constant, which I will note by alpha qy to be the infimum of the set of post p number gamma such that there exists a constant and a suite in Y of rational points in Y over Q, different from the point Q. And the, so the next, this number approximate Q with the product of the distance and their height to some power bounded by C. OK, no problem. OK, no problem. So you can show, since L is ample, this is also the supremum of the set of positive number delta such that there exists a constant positive such that the distance of, an, of a y and q to the power delta times the height of y is bounded from below by c delta for all y in yk different from q. Remark.
So what can we say about this constant? So first of all, if we choose another distance function, another height function, because they are all equivalent, so this will not change the definition. So this definition is independent of the height and distance function chosen. Second remark is, so if you want better approximation, this, this means that we want to take alpha to be smaller. If you rise the power too much, it means the approximation is bad. So smaller is uh, alpha, better approximation we have. So example. First example, let us consider the case x equals to projective line P1 over Q. So K will be the rational numbers with the line bundle O1. And suppose Q, the first case, Q is a rational number. So this is the classical case. Well, if you write everything in this way, you will see that well, in the classical setting, the exponent is in the height rather in the distance. So if, suppose Q is rational, then by class well, it's very easy to prove that a constant is one. You simply take the absolute value of, well, the height to be the maximum of P and Q, and you, you, it's very easy. But if Q is algebraic irrational, so there are classical theorems by Didi Clay in 1842 which says that the constant alpha is smaller or equal to one over two. If you wish, this inequality has infinitely solution when gamma is equal to two. So we take one over half, the, well, the reverse. And if, so Liouville, the theorem in 1844, which says if the algebra degree is d, then the constant is bounded below by one over d. This means you cannot do better than one over d. This is follows from the Liouville inequality. But finally, here comes the famous theorem of Rose in 1955, which says that for all algebraic irrational number, the constant is exactly, well, it's, in fact, you cannot do better than one over two minus any epsilon. So the conclusion plus the it says that the constant for any irrational algebraic number is exactly one over two. So second example, let's look at several rational curves in the projective plane. Well, in the affine plane, if you wish. So let x equals to P2 with the line bundle. Uh, we are always working over Q. And let's consider, first of all, the nodal curve. So let A be a real number with an integer which is not a square. And consider the nodal curve with the equation like this. So, well, I, did, I forgot to say that Q 
so the Q is the point zero origin. So if you consider this curve, we have a natural parameterization given by so K sent to x y equals k square minus a k times k min square minus a. So you see, if we want to approximate the origin point, we have to let k, well, we have to let k, these two coordinates goes to zero. So this means k square minus a goes to zero, which is equivalent to saying that k approximates the irrational quadratic number square root of a, which is supposed to be irrational. So in this case, the approximate constant of alpha q of c, so c is the curve, is equal to the degree of c in with respect to this line bundle in P2, so it's three divided by two, of course, well, because of the Ross theorem or the Euclid theorem. Secondly, let's look at another curve, which is cusp, cuspidal. So let C prime be the curve, y squared equals to x cubed. With, with the parameterization k goes to k square k cube. So you see in this case, to approximate the origin point zero, zero, it means that you have to let k goes to zero. But the distance, well, how to say, distance between the point and the origin is equivalent to k square. So the distance 10 to 0 at the power 2. So we conclude in this case that the constant, so q is still the point at origin. In this case, the approximation constant with respect to this cuspidal curve is still the degree of this curve is 3 divided by 2 because of the power in the distance here. So what I want to stress in these two examples is that this type of singularities of rational curves are sensitive to, to the constant, but in different ways. So more examples for abelian varieties Example three. So for abelian varieties, now we have many many results. We should first do to Mondale way, and after that we have a master Wustot. And Falcons. So, which says that let, well, suppose x is abelian variety over k, and q be a rational point. And then, for any sequence, for any sequence of rational points, which approximate the point q. We have that uh, log one over the distance between Q and Y is small o of the height, the log to the height of Y. Well, this means that if you want to approximate the point Q, the distance, one over the distance, maybe like grow arbitrarily 
faster than the height. So the impossible to approximate the point. So this means, by the definition, the constant is infinite. And maybe a fourth example. So let's let's see be a curve of genius greater or equal to 2. So by the th famous theorem of Fartings, which says that our fixed number field, there are only finitely many rational points on C. So this means that we cannot find any sequence infinite sequence which approximate a fixed point. So in this case, we also have the constants is infinite. So secondly, I, I would like to state the theorem of Mikinor Rose, which generalizes classical approximation, Delphine approximation theorems. Let me introduce a new constant, which I will call the essential constant. So the essential approximation constant, uh, which will be denoted by alpha ESS Q with respect to the subvariety Y, is defined to be the the maximum of the supremum of all, which is taken for all open dense subset of Y, and the constant approximation constant calculate, calculated with respect to V. So in some sense, we look at generically what happens in Y. So definition. And we want to say that some sub variety is locally accumulating. So suppose Z is a closed sub variety. And we say that Z is locally accumulating. its essential constant is strictly smaller than that for x. So the theorem of Machino and Rose I mean, he relates this arithmetic notion with some other notion of geometric nature. So one constant is defined by Professor Selberger in last week, last week, maybe in 2002. So we define the constant i with respect to this point to be the volume, well, the integral of the volume function of L gamma, D gamma, over the volume of L, where we denote it by pi, the blow up 
of x at point at q. And we define L gamma to be the line bundle obtained by pullback of L minus gamma E, well, with E the exception divisor. So now I can state the theorem. So he disgeneralized the classical sub Smith subspace theorem and found things theorem. Which says the following. So if if the constant is small enough, precisely it is smaller than the constant I L over Q with respect to Q. And then actually the constant is strictly smaller than its essential constant. So what does this mean? Well, when you want, well, when the constant is smaller, it means you want good approximates. But the, when they're good enough, this means that generically, well, it is better than what happens generically. So in other words, now, the usual terminology is there exists Z locally accumulating such the constant of a Q with respect to X is computed through Z. So recall the classical Smith subspace theorem. So if we want some better approximates, they have to lie in finitely many linear subspaces. So that's what I want to say about the Delphine time approximation. So let me introduce the what is called local distribution. So the goal is to, I mean, try to see what happens locally, try to define a measure which measures the density of rational points which are near the given rational point. So maybe I start with the observation. So basic of observation is that if you look at the projective line, uh, well, projective plane, say, and Q one zero zero zero. and you define the height to be the maximum height. So H exp expressed in uh, homogeneous coordinates to be the maximum. If X, Y, Z are with, without common divisors. So now we are interested in the point which are, well, let B be a positive number that we consider the set of bounded height on P1. Such that the height 
is less or equal to b. And we look at the elements in this set, which are nearest to this point, and you will find that, well, those who, which are nearest to Q, so the distance is more or less the magnitude 1 over B. So the idea is to do some zoom operation by B to make this stable. So, so this is 2.1, 2 2.2 .2 formulation. So let us walk over Q from, from now on. And Q is a smooth point. So let us fix a local deformorphism. Well, local, I mean, of, in terms of real topology of X to the, this tangent space on Q, which is Rn. I note n to be the dimension of x. And which sends q to the original point. So now, suppose, suppose the essential constant is finite, and it's computed, well, it's achieved in an open set u. So suppose u be an open dense subset such that the constant, essential constant is achieved. So we call the essential constant is, well, we take all open dense subset. And suppose it exists. So now I define. So we define the family of measures. So we define delta with respect to the open set U and third sum, so let R be positive. And B, B is supposed to always to be the, the bound for the height. So I define this measure to be the the sum of the direct measure for all points, rational points in U of bounded height. And we do a zoom here with scalar B to the power one over R times P, times the image of P in the tangent space. So R will be called the zoom factor. So for example, if we take, uh, how to say, the characteristic function of the epsilon ball, which is by definition the characteristic function of the set, a set of points in the image such that the distance of this point with origin is smaller or equal to epsilon. And then we apply this measure to this characteristic function. 
what we get so delta u r b and this function essentially we are counting rational points in U of bounded height such that after zoom the distance is still smaller than epsilon so this means that the distance of rho p rho q well, to the origin is bounded by epsilon over b epsilon times b to the power m minus 1 over r. So on one hand, we are counting point with bounded height. On the other hand, when b tends to infinity, we are approximating the point q, which here denoted by origin. So So what we want, problem, does this family of measure converge weakly to some measure, well, after normalization exists or not? Some positive numbers such that the normalized measure defined by the measure divided by some normalized factor are coming probably from the Manning's conjecture. Does this tend to some limiting measure with respect to the zoom factor R? So this is what I want to study. So I didn't relate. So now I didn't relate what I want to do and the notion introduced by Makino and Rose. So remark. In fact, the choice of the zoom factor R is that this choice which relates their, their work and well, this problem. So first observation is that if we take R larger, this means that we are zooming the point with B to the power 1 over R, 1 over R is smaller. So the, so how, how to say, the zoom is weaker. So secondly, essentially, we are interested in in the cases where r is greater or equals to the essential constant. <coughs> so why? If we take r smaller, this means the zoom is very strong, and it turns out we get nothing at all. When b tends to infinity, this measure, well, we get, we get nothing. Essentially, we want, a, well, approximates with approximation constant more or less r, but when r is too small, well, since we have removed or accumulating sub subset, we get nothing. So I should say that the case where r is equal to the essential constant is the most interesting case. Because
is in some sense the critical value. We can get some very, some very strange phenomena. So uh, by convention, in this case, we will call the zoom to be critical. And for R, big, this means the zoom is weaker. We will call this subcritical. So now, can we say something about these two exponents on B? So in fact, in the spirit of the BATF mining and PACH principle, so I mean BATF mining, So essentially, this states that, according to the lectures by Professor Emmanuel Peck this week, on, well, on final varieties, or almost final varieties, rational points are equidistributed. So that means well, that if we take the sequence of Dirac measures, which count the point of bounded height, well, from now on, I forgot to say that we take the line bundle L to be minus kx. So if you consider this Dirac measure, so now what we, be, <coughs> what we are doing is we count rational points of bounded height in some very, very small neighborhood of zero, which is of diameter epsilon b minus 1 over r. And if we believe some strong equity distribution result, this might so this might be equivalent to the Volume of the ball to the power diameter b to the power one minus one over r times epsilon, and with the factor b log b, with power to the log b rank of the Picard group of x minus one. So this is this more or less the statement of the Bartiev Manning conjecture. If you compute this, so the volume of this ball in an n-dimensional x variety will be more or less b to the power minus n over r. So finally, so this is the zoom measure applied to the characteristic function. Finally, what we get is something like b to the power of 1 minus n over r log b to some power. So this, this more or less gives the prediction of the opponents beta and gamma, which is well, beta is equal to mi minus n of r. And I should say that uh, in, in many examples, the prediction on gamma, which is this guy, does not agree with what we get. But the ex prediction for beta agree for all examples. Now,
So like now let me explain several results, several varieties which are toric, uh, on which the local distribution is not. So result, uh, remember we we will work over, well, line bundles L equals to the anti-canonical bundle. So first of all, in dimension one, essentially we have only one varieties to, to study, namely the projective line. Because elliptic, elliptic curves and uh, higher genius curves we cannot approximate any rational point. So the result, first the result is due to Pajlu. He established the case where the point to be approximated is a rational point over Q. And uh, the conclusion is that the limit exists the constant we should take is one. I explained before, and the limit measure exists. Uh, no, in fact, when L is minus kx, we take L to be O2 and a constant will be two. I changed slightly the, the number here. So the limit measure exists, and it's something which is proportional to the one-dimensional Lebesgue measure. So this is for the critical zoom. So this says in the critical zoom, we find many, many points, even with a one-dimensional density. But when Q is irrational, in particular, when it is quadratic irrational, it turns out that the limit does not exist. And in fact, in a fixed neighborhood, there are only finitely many, well, the quantity is finite. I will state it as delta P1. So the constant to be taken is is the degree of L divided by two because of Roth theorem. And the series of measure applied to a characteristic function of diameter epsilon is the we get finite. Essentially, uh, when you zoom in a quadratic rational point, irrational point, you are you know, equivalently you are solving some quadratic, well, some Fermat ex equations, and it turns out they are very discrete, and it's impossible to chase discrete points. Maybe a question. So what you means to say, well, let me finish first. So, uh, so, so this is the critical case. So for subcritical case, which means I take the zoom factor uh, large, slightly larger 
then we get equidistribution, which means that the measure, the limiting measure is more or less the Lebesgue measure. So question, what can we say about other algebraic points of higher degree? So I, I think this question is more or less I mean, is related to the some effectiveness of Rose theorem. But look, when uh, the degree is larger than three, the critical zoom. Because for subcritical zoom, we can we also prove it is equidistributed. Now, higher dimension. So, uh, so as I talked in the very beginning of this, of so uh, in for split quadrics. And projective plane, locally, it seems that points are distributed uh, of di in different ways. So actually, Pagelo proved that for for the projective space Pn and n-fold projective line. The me limit measure actually exists, and it's ex exactly what we have seen in the picture. So for critical zoom. So maybe a small il illustration. So for P2, Essentially, what you get is something like this. So this is the point in the center to be approximated. And the limit measure is something of Hausdorff dimension 1. It's concentrated on lines passing through the point to be approximated. I forgot to say that we only care about, well, we care about the Q to be a rational point. Well, it's it's actually rational over the ground field. So this is the measure for P2. And for P1 times P1, the split quadric. So what we have seen is might be like many, many hyperbole. So this is the point in the center. And we get, well, slightly further, we get many, many points. And the density is of dimension, host of dimension two. So I looked at, uh, so a toric surface which is obtained by the blow up of P2 in its three invariant points. Well, the point one zero 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 one zero and zero zero one. So this is the well a del peso surface of degree C. So 
And then uh, let me note the point blown up by pi and q. I fix q to be a general point, which I can suppose it to be one. Well, the pullback one 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 in p two. It's in the maximum orbit, and I denote lines. The strict transformation of lines passing through. Pi and Q. So it's easy to compute that the degree with respect to anti conical line bundle on each Li is 2. It is 3, the degree of lines minus 1 blown up. And for general lines, it's 3. When it does not pass through the blown up points. And what's the result? So the result is the essential constant coincides exactly away with the degree of a general line. And the sub-variety defined by the union of three lines is locally accumulating. Because the approximation constant is strictly smaller than three. So we take the open subset U, to, to U which is defined by x minus z. And it turns out that measure with factor 3 and b is more or less, well, tends to b, 1 over 3 log b, limit measure. And maybe the drawing on this surface is as follows. So, um, so here we have three lines, which is locally accumulating. And outside the three lines, this is open set U. And the, measure, the density of the measure, so the dim Hausdorff dimension, is two. It's the full dimension. And it's, prop it's absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure, with density of this form. So this, this is also what you may expect from computer programming. And the density function highlight these three locally accumulating sub-varieties. So another example, I consider the another toric surface, which is the blow up of P1 times P1 at four invariant points. So this, this I, by this I mean uh, one zero times one zero and we have four choices. And so what happens in this surface is, so we still You know, by PI, the four points blown up, and the line join PQ. And you compute that the degree of LI is two.
So what's the result? Well, and actually, well, I stay here. So first, let always let u to be the complement of these four lines. So theorem is the essential constant is two. But these four lines contain much more points than the, than the points in U. So essentially what we, what we can expect is so this will be, den we denote four lines. And in fact, it turns out in the its complement, we get only finite limiting points. So let's state delta of Li with factor zoom, well, the zooming factor two is uh, sorry, I have to say Q is I choose to be well the the best point you can imagine. So the zoom on each line, we get a positive power of b. But if we zoom over u, we get only finite million points. So this example reveals the new phenomenon that even if well, the two different objects have the same approximation constant, the approximates in each of these objects may be quite different. And it's even negligible. So in fact, in fact, it turns out that uh, in this example, in U, the general approximation are done in a family of nodal curve. I've shown you in the beginning of the, this talk. Well, approximating nodal curves is equivalent to the approximation of quadratic irrational, irrational points by rational points, which has shown that we get only finite linear many points. But these four lines are really straight lines, and Q are really smooth points on these lines. That's why I get many, many points. But and finally, let, let me end this talk with a very quick, well, another example. So I consider the well, x to be the blow up of p1 times p1 in three of its four invariant points. So what we get here is more or less the same situation as in the for the top surface degree six, and uh, and we get three limes of degree two, which is which are accumulating. And the essential constant is phi over two. And in this surface, there are two, uh, a two-dimensional family of nodal curves which contribute to this essential approximation. Moreover, in a thin subset, which is below this line, there is a one-dimensional family of cusp spindle curve which also contribute to this constant. So remember that when we are zooming on cuspidal curves, we are approximating a really a rational number. So we get many, many points. But for nodal curves, we get very, very few points. So 
a priori, we cannot predict what happens in this area. But it turns out, well, let me first say that, so U is the complement of these three lines. If we consider, well, in the zoom measure, is, so if we restrict ourselves to one of the cuspidal curves, we will get a measure by the theorem of Pajlou. And this will be order one over five, some measure on cuspidal curve. But I think that if, I mean, it's actually bounded from below by a two-dimensional measure. You remember this one is one-dimensional. But I have, I have to fill in the details. And this measure also highlights these three lines which are accumulating. Thanks for your attention. Mm -hmm.